Do not. Do not. All right, so 205, circles in the corner play. What we're going to do, uh, and it's more algebraic today. Uh, there is uh, obviously a geometric tie-in. Um, but we're going to work with trying to figure out what the equation for uh, circles are in the coordinate plane, okay? Uh, and using our geometry understanding of the distance formula, Pythagorean theorem, that kind of stuff, is the link between these two um, ideas. Okay? Um, the formula uh, or equation of a circle in the coordinate plane, in the xy axis, is that right there. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared, where H and K are the X and Y coordinates respectively of the center of your circle, and R is in the radius of that circle, and the X's and the Y's are developed as points on the circle uh, or the circumference of your circle. Okay, so that formula relates to center point H and K, a radius R, and then the infinite number of points that are on my circle X and Y. Okay, so X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. When we come up with an equation, guys, throughout mathematics, an equation is just a rule that says this is how we come up with maybe the Y values when you choose an appropriate X value. Okay, uh, meaning when I say an appropriate X value, we're usually talking about an X value that is in the domain of our equation, okay, meaning that when I plug it in, I get something back, okay, um, so that's, that's kind of what's going on here, okay, we're going to, this, this rule here says choose an x value, plug it in, and this will then be a rule that provides us with what our, what our y values are, okay, um, you know, like y equals 2x plus 3, that is a rule that says choose an x value, plug it in, evaluate, and that gives you the y value that associates with it, right, this does the same thing. Okay. Uh, the uniqueness about this, though, is when I plug in a particular x value, it's actually going to give me back two y values. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about that maybe if we, if we get enough time here towards the end. All right, that's called uh, an implicit equation uh, because x's and y's are on the same side. Um, Writing the equation so that it's solved for in regards to y. I will incorporate square roots and stuff like that. Um, this, is, this is the way we prefer it. Now, the H and K, they're going to be numbers, okay? This is going to highlight the things here that are always going to be present inside your equation. Okay? The H, oh, I don't want to highlight the R. The H and the K are going to be things that you substitute in, but it's always going to be X minus whatever your H value is. So if your H value is positive, it'll be X minus, let's say it's positive 3, it'll be X minus 3. Does that make sense? If your H value is negative 3, so let's say your center is at negative 3 on the X axis, then it's going to be X minus a negative 3. Well, what's that turn into, though? X plus 3. But when we do these, I'm always going to write X minus whatever H is, whether it's positive or negative, all right, X minus a negative 3. Uh, and then we'll go one more step after that and, and kind of clean things up and change those minus negatives into pluses, okay? So here's, here's the logic of why this is geometry, okay? Let's look at this here, all right? The, the most kind of basic rudimentary type of compass that you'll ever come across is a segment in which it, you, is, that is rigid, that you can't bend or anything like that, so think about a stick, a ruler, maybe it's a piece of uh, rope that you have kept taut so it doesn't uh, have any sag in it. Um, but what we do is we pin down this point right here, A, okay? And that's going to be our center. Then all we do is we rotate B around A, and it creates our circle, right? That's all we need. That's, that's the most basic version of a compass, okay? Um, now... As I do that, those points, those, those points that are red right now are all X comma Y. These B points are all X comma Y's, okay? And those X comma Y's are related to one another through the use of that shape right there. That is a what? Triangle. What kind of triangle? A right triangle, okay? So the creation of 
this formula, this equation, is due to the fact of that right triangle. Okay, now we have done this before. No matter what segment you deal with in the coordinate plane, it is always the hypotenuse of some right triangle. Okay, now I'm going to call this point A just for the, the purposes of our formula that we've already generated. I'm going to use those letters H and K. So what we do is we let this be H comma K. Okay, and we let B be the points on the circle that are X comma Y. And now what we're going to do is we're trying to develop is there or, or recognize a relationship that exists between H, K, X, and Y and see if a formula generates with that relationship. Okay, and the relationship is that no matter where I put B, whether B is there, B is there, B is there, even if B is there, okay, we get the ability to deal with the distance formula, dealing with the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this X comma Y and H comma K, and I'm going to ask you to come up with the coordinates of C. So I'm going to come up with the ordered pair for C here. Now, what point is C vertically aligned with? B, right? So which coordinate should these two have in common? Should they have an X in common or the Y in common? Yeah, those two, point, those two points, if I'm looking at the x-axis, they should have the same x value, right? So if this one's x, this one's coordinate here is x. What do these two have in common? They have k in common. They have the y value in common, all right? Does that make sense? Now, we could call it h comma k. We call it x1, y. Well, we call it x, y, x2, y2, and all that kind of stuff. We, we could, it, it's just a redefining of our variables or, or, or coordinates here. It doesn't matter whether you use h and k, a and b, r and s, whatever you want to. Just generally speaking, math textbooks use h and k for that ordered pair. Okay? Now, here's, here's what we do then. Can you find, can you find this distance? What, what two things should I subtract to find that distance? If I subtract the, the x values of those two ordered pairs, shouldn't that give me the distance between a and c? So let's say this one was like 5, 4, and this one was 1, 4. Wouldn't that difference be 4? And that length would be 4? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So arbitrarily speaking, that should be x minus h. That is that distance, okay? Subtract those x's, you get that distance. Now, the reason I went x first is because visually I know that x is to the right of h, right? How am I going to, what am I going to subtract to find that distance? y and k. And because y is above this k value, I'm going to go y minus k. Now, you could, you could kind of put them in absolute value and not really care about the order, uh, but this is what we're going to do next. Those are the legs of a right triangle, correct? And this would be the hypotenuse, which is, I'm going to call it R. Usually, we call it D sometimes, or maybe C, or something like that, for the Pythagorean theorem. But if this is a right triangle, that is my A, so I square that, X minus H squared. This could be my B, right? Y minus K squared. And this is going to be my radius, which is R squared. Is that the formula that we just came up with or the equation I just provided you? Um, so that is where that thing's generated from, is the recognition that those points X and Y are related to H and K through the use of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. Now, somebody previously in the day said, well, can't we just do this? Can't we just figure out what R is equal to using that ordered pair and that ordered pair? Absolutely. If you remember your distance formula, I'm going to write it this way. It's the change in X, that quantity squared, plus the change in Y, that quantity squared. And if I use uh, these two points, so X minus H, that would be the difference in X, right? Square that. Add to it. Y minus K. And I'd square that, right? Now, how do I get rid of this radical? Square both sides, right? Oh, try to get rid of it. 
So it gives me x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, right? And then, so this would be d, but we would rather call that distance because it's attached to a circle. We'd rather call it, maybe redefine it a little bit more explicitly as r for the radius of a circle. Is that the same formula? Yes. Okay. So this is formula. The um, Pythagorean theorem, the circle equation, they're all the same thing. They're all the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. Um, so how are we going to use that? What they're going to do uh, on the end of course exam is they might give you something like this. They might ask you somehow they'll give you information of what, a, what center and what your radius is. Now, the way that they provide you that stuff might be explicit like it is here. You know absolutely that your center is at 5, negative 2, and your radius is 7. They might hide uh, what your center is and what your radius is through uh, maybe giving you a diameter or maybe giving you the endpoints of a diameter or maybe giving you um, maybe an alternative version of this equation. So they're going to somehow have to give that stuff to you, but it's not going to be as obvious as it is right here in this example. Okay? So they want us to write the equation. So the equation is x minus h squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to r squared. I always write that down, and then I just plug things in. There is your h value. There is your k value. So it's x minus your h. Your h is 5. You'll square that. Plus then, y minus your k. Well, k is what here? Negative 2. So I'm going to write y minus negative 2. I think that's the best thing to do. Um, it's, it's the safest thing to do in regards to getting the right plus or minus sign here. Uh, and then r squared would be 49, right? So now I'm just going to rewrite this as x minus 5 quantity squared plus y plus 2 now. That quantity squared is equal to 49. And there's your equation that's going to produce a circle for you. Is that all right? Now, here's the thing. Let's, and we could do this with uh, really anything between, so our circle, just kind of visualize this real quick. So it's going to be at 5, negative 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. And it's going to have a radius of 7. So right now that distance was 5. So if I put that right there, so my, my circle is going to come through and kind of touch right there. Does that kind of make sense? And then it's going to go down here as well. But now, if this is, so is that five? So I'm going to go out to, I'm just going to kind of run out of room here unless I can move it over. Eh. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Not terrible. Fast. No. All right, so let me just kind of redraw this. We had, so five. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 2 would be there. Uh, and then we went over here. And then, so, so that distance is 7, right? That's my radius. So then if I have, so that's 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, would be the other kind of end point of this sort of, if I were to draw this sort of, obviously that kind of stinks, but that circle's going to kind of look like that somewhat, right? And now, finish top and bottom, but um, what this rule does then for me is basically creates x values between negative 2 and, this was 5 plus 7, so negative 2 and 12. Does that make sense? So if I'm able to choose x values that are between negative 2 and 12, I should be able to plug in those x values to that equation and solve then for what the y values are that go with that. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, I'm going to do an easy one here because I, I just think it makes sense to, to, to explain this uh, situation. Would you agree that 5 would be inside that interval? Well, let's choose 5 then. Let's put x to be 5. So I'd have 5 minus 5 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 49, right? Is that going to go to zero? Okay. So then I'm left with just y plus 2 
squared equals 49. Does that give me y plus 2 is actually equal to 7? Does that make sense to everybody? Now, I square rooted, right? So not only is it 7, but it's plus or minus 7. And now I'm going to solve for y. So I get y equals plus or minus 7 minus 2, which means if I started with positive 7 minus 2, it would give me 5. If I go with negative 7 minus 2, it would give me negative 9. So when x is 5, when x is 5, what this is saying is that you can get a y value up here of 5. So that ordered pair would be 5 comma 5. But when x is 5, you're also going to get a y value down here that is negative 9. You see how that's a rule then that generates your y values for you if you choose an appropriate x. And by appropriate x, I mean i got to go between negative 2 and 12. If I choose another number uh, that's outside of that, we're going to have issues with square roots. If I choose like, uh, say, say if I choose, let's do 20 here. And we're going to talk about this a whole lot in the other class, but I do think it's important. If I choose 20 here, this would be negative, or sorry, this would be positive 15, right? Square that, you get 225, right? Then you would move that 225, so you have 225 plus y plus 2 squared equals 49. You're going to move that 225 to that side, so you get y plus 2 squared is equal to, what's that going to be, 176? But it's negative 176, right? Can you take the square root of negative 176? No. Okay. If you were to take your calculator, type in square root of negative 176, because any two number, the square root is uh, the number that you multiply by itself two times to get the radicand, right? So can you take a number and multiply it by itself two times to get a negative value? No. Okay. Uh, zero is the only one to do that, but we consider zero to be a uh, non-negative or non-positive value. Okay. So we don't. I don't have that situation. Okay. Well, I was just answering. You're kidding. All right. I don't think that. Thank you, Isaiah. You're welcome. All right. Here we go. Uh, let's write the equations for these. This should be pretty easy, I think, once you understand the formula. Okay. Three is your H. Five is your K, right? Obviously, six is R. So we're going to go, tell me what I need to write here. Oh, uh, X minus three. three. Credit square. Yeah. You forgot the credit card. Yeah, you, you forgot. forgot okay, plus, plus, plus. Yeah, plus uh, Y minus K parentheses. There you go. Two. Two. Square. Two. Square. Two. Equals. Square. Equals R which would be 36. Six. Come on. Okay. So that that's explicitly giving you that information and then coming up with the, the formula format. The way you guys can check this out, and I suggest maybe doing this on your homework, I, I know you have to have somewhat of a, a fluency with, with uh, GeoGebra a lot of times with some of the things I'm, I've been asking you to do with it, uh, but then if you could type, this is pretty easy. I know X minus 3 squared plus Y minus 5 squared equals 36, and that's going to graph this circle for me. Oops. It's going to graph this circle for me. And all I have to do then is see if the information that I was provided at the onset, the center was at 3, 5, exists here. So I can, there's actually a center tool. Click here, go down to midpoint or center, click that, click your circle, and it gives you the center 3, 5. Is that what we were provided with, 3, 5? Okay. I can put a point then on my circle anywhere. doesn't matter. Okay, and you rotate for wherever you want to. Let's say I put it right there. If I go from A to B as a segment, you see how it gives me six back? It shows me that radius was six. So by typing the equation into GeoGebra, I can then go through kind of those operations to generate the information that I started with to create that equation. If any of that stuff would be wrong, if I would have gotten a radius to be like 12 here, then I know that the equation that I generated was actually incorrect. I gotta go back and rethink things. Yes. Uh, because a circle. No. 
what we do, and I don't, I don't know if this is going to load, just because our internet's been a little bit sketchy the last couple of days. Let's see here. Okay, so a circle is one of four different shapes that are generated when you take two inverted cones. Two inverted cones, meaning that there are two cones that are congruent, but they are sharing a vertex with one another. Okay? And then you take a plane and you intersect those cones with that plane. We call that a cross section. Okay? When we, when we take this plane and cross through the cones that way. So basically what happens here is that this plane is parallel with an edge of our cone. What happens is we get this shape here. What is that shape right there? That's a parabola. Okay. As we start adjusting the degrees of the cone, okay, so basically as we adjust the vertex angle of this cone to be larger or smaller, and we adjust the plane of intersection, okay, eventually... So we get, um, let me go back real quick. All right, so I adjust the, I adjust the intersection of that plane that way. And what does that intersection look like? Okay, an oval. The, the math word for that is an ellipse. Okay. Um, and then an ellipse. An ellipse is actually a special case scenario of making that plane uh, parallel with the base of my cone, and now you see that that intersects a circle, right? And the last one is taking, let me change the position of this. That shape right there is what we call a hyperbola, okay? So that, that, that's why it's called a conic, is because it's one of those four shapes that it's created. Um, now, Algebra 2, your Algebra 2 peers right now, I think they just finished maybe last week or the week before their overall unit with conic sections. So this is something that you guys will investigate again later on in that course. We talk about it again in College Algebra, and we use this circle a lot in trigonometry. Okay? So it's a good question. Um, but that's the reason it calls it a conic. Okay? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Let's do. Let's do something like this question here. We're gonna answer for that. Which one are you talking about? Yeah, it was, it was x minus three squared plus y minus five squared equals forty-nine. Absolutely. Okay, because they're, they're wanting the equation. This is, guys. I pulled this off of uh, a previous end of course exam. Uh, either last year or the year before. Uh, it says, a circle with the center O is shown. It says, create the equation of the circle. So they're, they're wanting you, you will see one like this, uh, or similar to this. They're wanting that x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared equation. Okay. Now, what sticks, if you were to look, guys, if you were to look at your end of course exam reference sheet, that thing is not there. Let's, let's do this. Let's, uh, I think I've got a reference sheet saved here somewhere. Yeah. Yes. All right, so if I, if I open this reference sheet up, guys, the circle equation is not on here, right? But the distance formula is, isn't it? I saw a circle going up there. Okay, where? Right there. That's the area of the circle. It's still a circle. The circle equation. That, those are formulas. Okay. Still. Well, well, a formula is an equation, but it's a, it's a formula, an equation that provides you a numerical characteristic, right? Yes. Okay, so down here, we get the distance formula. Now, this is, if you think about this, if I square both sides, 
I get D squared, right? Oh, my gosh. That's the R. And that would be R. Okay? And if I square the right-hand side, it's X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared, right? Oh. The X1 and the Y1 are your H and, and your K. Of the, circle. the center of your circle. Okay? So even though it's not described exactly the way we've seen it as X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared, you can maybe use this to help generate that if you forget it. Okay? Um, okay. So looking at, looking at this question then, okay, what is your R value? Okay, so this is a unique question in regards to the fact that it's kind of easy because it allows you to do the shortcut of counting to find distance. So we know that we go here, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, right? So that's our radius. Now, can I have done that going up? Or left or down, right? Okay. Now, if I go diagonal and you can count that distance, you're pretty good. Okay. Um, but we get R to be 4. So R squared is what? 16. Now, what is H? Okay. H is 1 because your center is 1, 1, right? Okay. So the H is that first one. So we get X minus 1 squared plus then Y minus 1 squared is equal to 16. Okay. So that, that red equation is what you would need to type in then into your end of course exam. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to draw a comparison to that, to this question. Let's find, let's find the equation of that one. Okay. Now, what is H and K? Okay, so there's H, there's K. So when I go, I'll go x minus 1 squared plus y minus negative 3. Minus negative 3 turns into plus 3 squared is equal to r squared. What's r? Um, well, from, uh, back to back, you need to the so you're saying from there, if I go to the last question and do the same approach, I would go there or maybe go straight up, and you count how many? Five, and you would square that and you get 25, right? Okay, that is wrong. That is wrong because if I zoom in here, and this is, this is what I hate about this type of thing, but if I zoom in here, do you see that that right there is your grid line that is vertical, right there is your grid line that is horizontal. Or is your circle passing through that intersection? No. No, it's slightly to the right of it, Craig. It's, it's so it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a value of R that is a smidge bigger than 5. Okay? So. What we need to do, and this is hopefully the fact that they give you this 2-2 two -two up here allows you to realize that counting is not the technique you want to use, okay? I want to find R, and R is going to be that distance there, right? Now, I counted, and it, was a, it looked like it was 5, but it was a little bit bigger. So when I get an answer here, it should be a little bit bigger than 5, okay? How do I find that distance? Distance, distance formula. So subtract the X's. So if I subtract my X's, I get 2 minus 1, and I get 1. I'll square that. I will then add to that the difference in my y's. What's 2 minus negative 3? 5. And I'll square that. What do I get when I add that stuff together? You get 26. 26. So that's my distance of the radius, right? So what is r squared? 26. 26. There is my equation. Is radical, is radical 26 pretty close to 5? What would be 5 as a radical? Huh? Radical 5? Radical no. 25. Radical 25. Okay. Radical 25 and 5 are the same number. Yeah, sure. I thought you said radical 25. Don't touch that. Okay. So what we're seeing here then, guys, let's, let's say that I type in what we had, x minus 1 squared plus y 
plus three. Yeah. Squared equals, let's say that I initially counted and got 25. Here's where I would use GeoGebra to justify whether I've done this correctly or not. First of all, I would click on the midpoint or center and see that it gives me the center that they started me with, right? Now, they also told me that there was a point, 2 comma 2, that should exist on this circle. If I put 2, 2 on there and I zoom in, is it on that circle? No. Okay? So that shows me that it, that is not the circle I'm looking for. We're looking for this thing to be 26. And now you see that, that it's not much of a, bigger, a much bigger of a circle, is it? It just changed just a little bit, but now that point goes, or that circle goes to that point 2, comma 2. Okay? So here's the thing. That's why I want you to kind of commit to memory, maybe write it down your paper. In your homework, if they give you a point on your circle, use it. Okay? If they don't, if they just give you the center, then you can probably count. Okay? Um, so you, you would type this whole thing into your answer, yes? All right, so let's work backwards. Number 25 here, what is the center going to be for number 25? Is negative three. No, 25. This one here. Negative seven. Negative seven five is the center, and radius is four. What about this one down here? Negative four one. Radius is five. What about this one over here? Three negative eight. Three negative eight. Radius is ten. What about this one down here? Zero zero. Zero zero. Six. Radius is six. So. The rate, so x squared, understand this, x squared is exactly the same thing as x minus 0 squared, is it not? Yes. Okay. So whenever you see an x and a y by itself squared, that means that coordinate for the center is at 0. Okay. Well, if it was like x minus 3, that quantity squared, plus y squared, then the y has a, the coordinate has a y value of 0. And the x would have a y value. I think I said negative 3, so it would have a y, or an x value of 3. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Um, so let's do one of those real quick, just to, to get off. If I have like x minus 4 squared plus y squared equals 7, what is the center at? Where's the center of this thing? 4 comma 0, because the y value here, that's y minus 0, right? What's the radius? Radical 7. Radical 7. Good. Uh, all right, let's go. Let's do one more example here. Here, this is this is kind of what I was talking about earlier. Is that they might they might hide your center and your radius. They might not give it to you explicitly. Here, they tell me that A and B are the endpoints of my diameter. So A is at 3, 0. B is at 7, 6. Okay? And if I want to plug in to X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared, are either of these points H comma K? No, those are the endpoints of my diameter. Okay, where at on that line? The center, which what's a better word for the center? The, oh, the midpoint. How do I find the midpoint of a segment? Add the axis. Add the axis, divide by 2. So 10 divided by 2 gives me 5. Add my y's. Divide by 2, 3. So now when I plug in here, it's x minus 5 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals, still I find my radius, right? Now, there's various ways of doing this. Can I find A, B's length? And then divide it by 2, right? Yeah. What would probably be easier is actually to find the length between A and 5 comma 3, or between 5 comma 3 and B. I'm going to do A, why would I, why is A, let's call this point C, why is A better to use 
zero. Okay, because it has a zero. Okay. So if I go R, so R will equal the square root of five minus three. What's five minus three? Two. Two squared. Four. Four. Add to it three minus zero. Nine. Squared would be nine. So it gives me R to be root thirteen. So what is R squared? Thirteen. Thirteen. So that would be the equation of that circle. Okay, so now, now what we would do, guys, to check this, let's just go back into geodes. We go x, uh, what, minus 5 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 13. What I would do is I would see does the center of 5, 3 exist there? It does. Does the point... 3 comma 0 exists on there. It does. And does 7, 6 exist on there? It does. And even further, if I connect B and C, it goes through my center. So it is a diameter. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, but those are, those are little things, I think, that we've addressed throughout the year and realizing how to find a midpoint, how a center of a circle is on the diameter, those things we know on an individual basis, can we, can we tie them in, wrap them together to figure out what the components are, H, K, and R, for our circles? Well, you're shooting out of Okay. Um, let's do this question. Let's go X squared plus Y squared plus 4X minus 6Y minus 3 equals 0. Every, every circle in the form of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared can be foiled out. Your x minus h squared. So let's say h is like 3. We go x minus 3 squared, right? Well, that means x minus 3 times x minus 3, which is actually x squared minus 6x plus 9 if you foil it all out. Well, I can do the same thing with my y's. And what happens is I get some constant terms I could add together. And when I do that, when I expand x minus a squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, generally I get something that looks like this. Now, this form is ugly, right? Okay. A lot of times it's called conic section form. Okay. Um, but it's not, it's not very insightful in regards to if I ask you to look at that, you're not going to know of any of the numbers up there, you're not going to be able to tell me where the center is and what the radius is. You have to do a little bit of work here. So here are the steps to doing this. And you'll, you'll experience this again next year. You'll experience it again the next year after that. Okay? But you might be asked to do this in about seven days. Seven school days. Next Wednesday you take that test. All right. So the way you do this is the first thing is that you're going to move all your constant terms, all the terms that do not have variables, you're going to move them to the other side. Okay, so that's going to turn into x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y equals 3. Okay? The next thing you're going to do is you are going to take the x terms, and you're going to group them using the commutative property, and kind of the associate property, but you're going to take the x's, and you're going to write them next to each other. So just using the commutative property of addition. Okay? I'm then going to take the y terms and do the same thing. Now, as you, as you see, I've kind of left gaps there, right? After the x's and after the y's, do the same thing. Leave little gaps there. What is the prefix? Ortho, uh, it refers to being perpendicular. Okay? So x squared plus 4x plus y squared minus 6y equals 3. That's the same thing I started with. It's just reorganized. The reason we do that is because we're going to take, you guys remember the phrase, complete the square? Yep. Okay, that's what we're going to do here. Okay? So completing the square, you take your linear term, which is the variable that has an exponent of 1. You take that term and take its coefficient, which would be 4, right? You half it. What's half of 4? 2. Then you take that number and you square it. So what's 2 squared? 4. 
and you add that here. Okay? Now, this was an equation, right? I just made that equation unbalanced by adding 4 to the left. So add that same four to the right. Now it's still balanced, right? Okay. Now I'll do the exact same thing for the y's. So take half of your linear term for the y's. What's the linear term for your y's? Well, linear term is negative six. When you take half of that, that's, that's when you get the negative three, right? Take the negative three and now do what with it? Square it and you get nine. So add nine here. And you're going to add nine over there. Well, that's be the reason we do that is because we're that x squared plus 4x plus 4 now is what we call a perfect trinomial. Yeah, I remember those. And a perfect trinomial is a trinomial that can be rewritten as a binomial squared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if you don't have any, like, what if you just have x squared and you have y squared minus x squared? You then you just, you just do it with the y, and you'd be fine. You leave the x squared alone. And because that x squared, you know, then is going to be, in regards to the center, it's going to be attached with an x value of 0. Good question. I took half that number and squared it. I took half that number and squared it. Okay? So what that generates then, guys, is that that is what I said to be a perfect trinomial, meaning it can be written as x plus or minus something squared. That's called a binomial squared. Now, the plus or minus is that half value that you found. So what's half of four? Two. This is a perfect trinomial, which means it can be rewritten as y plus or minus something squared. Well, that plus or minus something is half of that negative 6. What was half of that negative 6? Negative 3. It's equal to, then, this side over here. If I add that stuff together, I get 16. What format did that just generate? Math. That's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, isn't it? So the center is located at negative 2, 3. The radius is 4. Okay. Completing the square was the, the kind of foundation that you guys went through last year to factor things. Okay. It's actually a, t it's a very useful tool uh, in being able to convert our... Um, conic sections into different formats, okay? And, and a circle was one of our conic sections. So you might see a couple of those. Uh, on that Khan Academy that we had you guys sign up for uh, during Wildcat Prep Days, there was a couple questions that asked you to do this. Um, that's how you do it, okay? Um, my plan, guys, tomorrow, first thing, ask your questions about the homework, okay? 12-5 is open. It's not due tomorrow. Okay? So I know some people try and won't get it until the day that's due. Okay? But I'll ask. I just did. Okay? So um, that's the first thing we'll do. Ask any questions over that. We can, we can address those as many as we need to. And then I want to move into probability. The next day, if, we, if, if somebody looked at 12.5 and we want to talk about some of those questions on Wednesday, we can do that as well. Does that make sense? And then pick up with probability. So over the next three or four days, Answer any questions you have about circles and their equations, um, and then also kind of working with probability after that. Yes? Are we going to take a test? Next Wednesday. So we don't have any tests.